Roots are often considered the hidden part of plant biology. Roots are incredibly important to plants. And yet, over the generations we've been breeding plants, we've never actually been able to look at the root system. So we haven't actually specifically bred plants with the right kind of traits in the root system that we're after. And if we can exploit this untapped resource, this untapped genetic resource, we can hopefully produce varieties that will do better at getting things like nutrients out of the soil, better at working in either waterlogged or the opposite, droughted soils and soils where you have to put less input, such as fertilizer in. I'm magnifying the plant at 200 times so that I can see it in a very um, detailed way. So um, the, I have to first make sure that it is in the right position, in the right format, and then I'll excite it with the laser. Our aim is to understand how the root um, uh, responds to gravity signal. Most of the roots, as you know, go down into with the gravity vector in searching for water, but what they lose mainly is the nutrient, absorbing nutrients in the top soil, first 10 to 20 centimeters of the soil where most of the nutrients are found. So if we were able to make a root more efficient in absorbing the nutrients and at the same time in absorbing water, we would be able to, in the longer run, hopefully, uh, uh, make the plant produce more yield. Well, we're trying to understand how roots form, particularly what determines which cell forms in which position. My work specifically is uh, involved in the water transporting cells, so the xylem and the phloem. And my hope is that when we understand the events or the, 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 the mechanisms that control the patterning of these cells, we can use this to alter the water transporting properties of the plants and this would have great effects on things like water conservation, and which is a particularly important uh, factor as we have climate change uh, threatening the amount of uh, food we can produce at the moment. This is lab-scale phenotyping. Phenotyping is the measuring of the shape and structure of, or of traits. In this case, it's roots. So we're imaging roots of the model, model plant Arabidopsis thaliana. Um, Arabidopsis is a, a relative of cress, it's used because it's quick to grow, can be grown on plates in which we can control the environment. And in this kind of setup as we have here, we can grow many, many plants at relatively high throughput. So we can image lots of roots at the same time, do relatively large experiments, gain lots of data, and then use statistics and image analysis to analyze that data to see where the genetics leads into the root architecture. Plants are naturally very adaptive to their environment. And the idea of this research is to harness that adaptation and try and make varieties that are perfectly matched to the environment they grow in. The reason we're using X-ray computed tomography is because it's a non-destructive way of analysing the plant's root system inside the soil. We put the sample inside the scanner and we scan it and we can separate the root system out from the soil based on their differences in electron density. Um, so the, the soil has a much higher density than the lower density roots. So then we use imaging software to look at how the spatial orientation in three dimensions of the root systems actually is. What root track does is starts at the top, the user indicates where the root is to begin with and then lets it go and root track moves from one image to the next looking for the movement of the root and changing shape and labelling everything that it sees in red. So here you can see the original root has split off and you've got multiple roots weaving down through the soil. And if you stitch all those red bits back together, you end up with a 3D description of the root. What we're doing is a, a multi-camera reconstruction of plant canopies. And, uh, and so this particular plant I've got is it's essentially uh, been captured by multiple camera views and turned into a, uh, into a point cloud, um, which is just a, a series of uh, three-dimensional points. Uh, and basically what I'll be working on is an algorithm to reconstruct a plant model based on this information, so try and find out where the leaves are and where the stem is, and eventually that will be used by the mathematicians to do some modelling.
Part of the images that we're generating are looking at the field scale, so we're seeing how crops grow out in the real world on the farm, and we can do that by remote sensing and taking images um, that look at a variety of different wavelengths, um, and from that we can ascertain how healthy the crops are. So what sort of pictures is this octopopter taking then? So it takes multispectral images, um, so whereas your camera at home takes uh, images that are red, green and blue, this one can see wavelengths of light that we can't see and we can use those uh, images in mathematical equations and from that we can work out uh, how the crops are doing in the field. Can I give you a leaflet? Yeah. So we're from the University of Nottingham. We've done a stand which is all about... My job is to act as a go-between between the researchers and the rest of the world, essentially. So I talk to people um, from schools. I talk to the public. I also run our training and workshops. So when we train young researchers, then that's my job to organise those events as well. It's really letting everybody else in the world know what CPIB does. We're publicly funded research, so we need to let the rest of the world know what we're doing. But also it's just really important that everyone knows the science that we're doing and, and that it really does lead to impacts in the real world as well. The gap between basic discovery and a crop species can be up to 10 to 15 years. That's why research has to be done now. If you look at the rates at which we've increased the yield from crop plants, that's increased massively since the 1950s and it's starting to plateau out at exactly the time that population is going also exponentially in another direction. We have to use every resource we can to increase yield, otherwise we simply aren't going to be able to feed the world in the next 10 or 20 years. 